Hey, what's up YouTube? In this video, I'll be showing you how to make a Domino's Pizza Restaurant. Welcome to the pizza party. You know, I think that's all the information that I have to give you. <laughs> if you are not subscribed to the channel already, please subscribe. Click the little bell next to the subscription button. That'll ensure that you get all of my stuff sent directly to your sub box, and you'll be able to keep up to date with all of the awesome city builds that I have been making on the channel. And there have been a lot of them. I really appreciate all of the love that you guys have been showing me on these city related builds. I really do. They have become my favorite things to make on the channel so far. But without any further ado, let's get started. Much love to all of you guys that have been supporting these videos. Now before we begin building, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you how this is going to work. We are building dominoes in two separate parts. The first part, we are going to focus on the outside of the building, which requires all of these materials that you can see on the screen right now, and the amounts of those materials that you will need as well. That's what we'll be using first. However, once we have finished with those, we will work onto the inside of our Domino's Pizza, which will require a whole different set of materials, which are these ones right here. Those we won't need until later. I will also show you them again, so don't worry about grabbing them now, but do make sure that you are able to gather them when you need to. The amount of space required to make your Domino's Pizza is a 26 by 24 block area on the ground, represented by the that white concrete area that you can see. I would highly recommend making the grid if you are focusing on a city and you are limited on space. It will just help you plan out the build a little bit better. And that's it. Make sure that you have access to all of those things. Make sure that you have enough room to build this. Pause the video if you have to. And once you're ready, we can begin. Step one, my happy city builders. We want to come all the way to the front left-hand corner of the grid that you may have made earlier. From the front left-hand corner, you want to count backwards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is the starting position. If you have made the grid, we are building in the exact same place. Isn't that cool? Well, on top of this block, I want you to place a terracotta. I also want you to place three birchwood planks. One, two, three. I also want you to place two white concretes. One, two. And additionally, place a red concrete on top. That, roughly speaking, is about the height of the building. I want you to return back down to the terracotta on the ground and extend it to the right by ten blocks. One, two, three. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Perfect. Place in front of this a birchwood blank. On top of that, place three more. 1, 2, 3. I want you to use birchwood slabs and go right by 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Place a birchwood blank on the end of that and extend it down to the ground. Place a terracotta behind the birchwood blank and extend the terracotta to the right by 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Perfect. Extend that 10th block backwards by 14 using terracotta. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 11, 12, 13, 14. We are then going to extend that 14th block across the back of the build like this and consequently all the way to the front of the build. This will give us a large rectangular shape like so. That is most of the space that we have inside of the build. What I then want you to do is on the very back of your dominoes I want you to build this sequence of blocks on top of the very long row of terracotta. Begin with three rows of birchwood planks. One, two, three. Two rows of white concrete. One, two. And a final row of red concrete, like this. So, exactly the same that we have on the front. The difference being is, on the back, we have no features. Meaning, there's no windows, there's 
really no detail back here to speak of whatsoever. Not that you can't add it, you're more than welcome to if you wanted to add some bins or trash cans or dumpsters or if you wanted to add a rear entrance or possibly some windows. You are more than welcome to do that, but that isn't the video showing how you can add small details to a particular build. What I then want you to do is extend the white concrete and red concrete area outwards, sticking out of the back. This will create depth and it will also mirror what we will do to the front, so it will look quite good like this. Now that we have taken care of the back area, I think that we are going to focus on the sides, which will, once done, leave only the front. On both sides of the build you want to do this, so bear this in mind. Coming across the row of terracotta coming from back to front, I want you to place three white concrete blocks. One, two, three. Followed by two birch woods. One, two. Followed by three glass of any kind, I prefer paint. One, two, three. Then two more birch planks. One, two. And then three more glass, again of any kind. One, two, three. Finish up with a birchwood plank. The birchwood planks can be extended up each by two. This will mirror what we have done on the back and keep a consistent design. We want to have red concrete connecting all of the birchwood areas together. So just at the top, connecting all the way together. You want to add another layer of glass on top of the previous layers of glass and the same with the white concrete. Well, you want to use white concrete, not glass, but you guys get the idea. Additionally, you can even extend the white concrete and the red concrete forwards. So extending on top from the back of the build forwards, like this, kind of reminds me of Colgate. You know the toothpaste, red and, red and white? Anyway, once you've done that, I want you to do the same on the opposite side. Literally the same. So on this side, you would start from the back and you can see it over there. One, two, three white concrete, two birch, then three glass of any kind, one, two, three, and then two birch, and then three glass, like that. You extend up every single birchwood plank up as high as the birchwood surrounding it. You place a row of red concrete above the windows and the back area that we have boxed in. By the way, you may have noticed that, that I have the white concrete area next to the windows. This kind of just makes the side of the build a little bit more interesting, but additionally you can add a window there if you like. Or you could add various advertisements for you know, pizzas and stuff, so it, it can be kind of made into a few different things. We are then going to add the two rows of white concrete on top, and you'll see it'll actually connect to the front as we did it a little bit earlier, with the row of red in between, or on top actually. But that is what we want to have so far, ladies and gentlemen. You can see we've made a large part of the build. What we are now going to do is focus on the left and right sides on the front of the build now. So, coming across the rows of terracotta, and bear in mind, you do this on both sides. You want to place, coming across the terracotta, left to right, three glass of any kind, two birchwood planks, three glass, one, two, three, and then two birchwood planks. This will connect behind the entrance. You then raise up the birchwood planks by two rows, as you have done pretty much everywhere else. You place red concrete coming across the top of the windows, and then you place glass above the windows like this. And then, if you like, you can connect the white and red concrete areas across from each other, so you can connect the left and right sides together. Later on, we may have to tamper with this a little bit as we have a sign and other things to consider, but for now, we can have this. Once you have done that to the left side, we want to focus on the right. On the right, we want the same thing. So starting from the right here, we are going to place going right to left, free glass, two birch, free glass, 
and then to Birch, the second of which will come inwards and up and behind the entrance. We of course also want to extend the Birch wood up to connect to the white concrete above it and the red concrete underneath the white but above the windows with glass in between. Quite a simple design but it looks really good once it's finished. Okay, so you may have been wondering to yourself how we're going to turn this blind building into a pretty cool looking building. It's quite easy actually. I want you to begin by placing black glass block, specifically block, behind the birchwood slabs of the entrance. We're going to place quartz blocks underneath the black glass. And we will place birch uh, quartz blocks connecting the ground connecting to the ground on the left and right hand sides like this. This will leave room for a double door that we will be placing later. Above the entrance, I want you to add a row of birchwood planks directly above, extending the birchwood planks left a row and right a row like this. I want you to add another row of birchwood planks on top of this, like so. And I then want you to place a row of quartz slabs on top of that. This might have been an error, and I'll tell you why. I want you to extend the white concrete and the red concrete one row forwards. So the two rows of, red, of white concrete at the top and the single row of red, I want you to extend one row forwards. So, the only error that we made actually was placing the quartz slabs a bit preemptively. I do apologize for that. But we still want to retain this shape. You can see it looks a lot more interesting already. This is due to the layers of depth between the entrance, the frame around the entrance, the building, and then the top of the build as well. We are going to extend the two rows of birchwood planks above the entrance, one row towards us, like this. We are going to place a single blue concrete on top of the left side of the birch plank entrance with a row of quartz slabs coming across the rest of the build like this. Later on, but not now, we will be writing dominoes in front of the area that we have just created using birch planks. But we are now literally going to make a domino from this blue concrete area. Going left of this blue concrete, I want you to place a white concrete, and then a blue, and then a white, and then a blue. Underneath the white concretes, place blue concretes. Join them together in the middle, and extend the middle down. I also want you to place blue concretes on top of the white concretes, and join them in the middle, and extend the middle up. Now that we have completed the lower half of our domino, I want you to place two quartz blocks in these positions, in the upper right hand corners of the blue lower half of the domino. I then want you to place a red concrete block going right of the lower quartz block. Extend the red concrete up one, right one, up one, right one. Take the original block and extend up, left, up. Take the original block here and go left, down, left. Place a red concrete in between the two quartz blocks and a white concrete in the remaining area. That will give us a domino shape. We are then going to place behind the domino sign slash entrance we are going to place a couple of rows of the domino extending backwards what i mean by this is probably about two additional rows of the domino we want to add red more red concrete more blue concrete and more quartz and more white concrete to make the domino 3d and to blend into the roof so just like this all you do is copy the exact same blocks that you have placed. You will only be able to extend the upper half of those blocks, however, but that doesn't really matter. Just extend it backwards. What we are now going to do is 
I want you to take the same birch wood blocks that we have above the entrance, this row of eight birch wood planks. We want to place an additional row of eight birch wood planks behind the top of the build as well. So where you can see this quartz slab here, I want you to place a birch wood plank in the same spot just on top of the build. You then want to extend that birch wood plank all the way over to the right. It will go to the right by eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Just like that. I then want you to extend it up another row where possible, like this. You can even destroy part of the back of the domino if you like. And then I want you to extend the birch wood planks a couple of rows backwards, like one, two. So the reason that we're adding additional rows coming backwards is because it adds a level of depth that you can see from the ground. So like now, if you're on the ground and you take a look at it sideways, it looks a lot better than if you were just to have, say, like a pixel art of the Domino's logo up there. At least I think it looks better. I hope that you guys do too. So the next thing that we're going to do is give this thing a roof. And the roof can be made in many different ways. I mean, it's completely up to you how you really do this. Uh, for instance, I'm going to give the roof a nice layer of blue concrete. The blue concrete is going to sit one row below the red concrete of the roof. So I'm going to one row lower than the red concrete area that goes all the way around the top of the roof, I'm going to place a row of blue concrete, just like this. And the reason that I'm placing blue concrete is because then we've kind of got a nice array of colors. Like we've got our blue, we've got our red. I mean, we're missing a little bit of white, but that doesn't really matter at all. You could add a little bit, maybe like inside of the blue if you want to, but I mean, primarily it's, it's red and blue, isn't it? Like the white's only a, it's only a little bit of a factor. So there we go, that looks quite good. And also, of course, don't forget to extend the birch wood plank blocks down as well. And you can even, if you like, kind of like extend the domino backwards like this and get rid of like the red concretes that would be there instead. So just it kind of like fades in a little bit better. Now that we have done that, I am going to show you the very last thing that you have to do to absolutely turn this dominoes into like the next level of dominoes how you rarely separate it from just like a regular other building we've got to make the sign that's that's how it's done it really does make quite a bit of difference so i'm going to get rid of all of these materials and i'm going to use a crafting table and i'm going to slap a crafting table down on the ground we will then need blue banners, actually only seven of them really, white dye and blue dye. So this is the part of the video where I show you how to write dominoes across the top of your building. As some of you may know, this is not my favourite part of these tutorials. I don't really enjoy making banners, so I might end up making them a little bit quick. I do apologise if I do, but feel free to pause where necessary and slow the video down and all that sort of fun stuff. So. First of all, we're going to crack open the crafting table and we'll start with D and we'll end with S, left to right. The first thing we have to do is place a blue banner in the centre of the table, with a row of white dye coming up the right side top to bottom. You grab the new banner and you place it in the middle right of the table. You want to place a blue dye in the middle of the table. This will create an indentation. Grab the new banner and place it in the centre of the table. Place a strip of white dye coming across the bottom of the banner. Grab the new banner and place it once more in the centre of the table. Place white dye coming up the left side of the banner. Grab the new banner and place it in the middle of the table. And place white dye coming across the top of it. Grab the new banner and place it in the centre of the table and this part is optional. You can see that we actually have a completed D banner. but. If you place blue dye along the edge of the banner, you'll notice it more defines the D. And you can see the difference it makes. If we place it here in the first position, you can see it really looks good because you've got the nice blue that comes out from the edge of the banner. 
That's banner number one, ladies and gentlemen. Banner number two is O. Luckily for us, we can use this twice. Place a new banner in the middle of the table with white die coming up the left side. I, I see that I've placed two, haven't I? Silly me. There we go. Grab the new banner and place it in the middle of the table with white die coming across the top. Grab the new banner and place it in the middle of the table with white die coming top to bottom along the right side. Grab the new banner and place it in the middle of the table with white die coming along the bottom. Grab the new banner and place it in the center of the table and this part is optional again I'm going to point this out place blue die along the edge of it all the way around and you'll get a very nice defined look that way and it, it adds an extra color across this top part here which I think is important but the O belongs next to the D so you would have D O M I N and then another O here, and then E and S. So that's why I spelled out dominoes for you, because we're using this twice. So D-O, one, two, three, skip spaces, and then place another O. Now we have to make our M. So M is a little bit difficult. I want you to place a blue banner in the top middle part of the table, with white die left, right, and below, like this. Grab the new banner and place it in the middle of the table. And place blue die left, right and above, like this. Grab the new banner and place it in the middle of the table with white die coming up the left side. Grab the new banner and place it in the middle of the table with white die coming up the right side. We now have M. However, I'm going to place the blue die all the way around it because in this particular instance I think it looks better. There are some places where it doesn't, but there we go. M. Perfect. So now we have to make an I. One of the easier ones. Place a brand new banner in the middle left of the table with a strip of white die coming top to bottom. Grab the new banner. And if you like, place blue die going all the way around the banner, as that is the completed banner. My favourite one to make. <laughs> so I'm going to place it up there, next to the N. Now we have to make N. Place a brand new banner in the very middle of the table, with a row of white die coming up the left side. Grab the new banner and place it in the middle of the table, with white die coming top to bottom along the right side. Grab the new banner and place it in the middle left of the table with white die coming top to bottom, top left corner to bottom right corner diagonally. Grab the new banner and that's actually complete, although we are going to place the blue concrete around it. And I'll show you the difference between uh, two different types of letters in a second. But there we go. Slap the N on there in between the I and the O. Now we have to make an E. So to make an E, we place a brand new banner right in the middle of the table with a row of white die coming top to bottom of the left side. Grab the new banner and place it in the middle of the table with white die coming a lot. Whoops, yep, white die coming along the top left to right. Grab the new banner and place it in the middle of the table with white die coming along the bottom. Grab the new banner and place it in the top middle of the table with white die coming across the middle left to right. That is the completed banner, that is the letter E. However, once again, we're going to be using that blue die to define it a little bit better. So I'm going to slap it right here next to the O. I have realized that we are going to need a little bit more white die. I do not have enough white die on me, however you should hopefully have enough because you guys checked out the item list and I don't make the item list until after these videos so hopefully we should all have enough stuff. Let's make the S. The S begins with a blue banner in the middle of the table and a white die coming across the top of the banner. Grab the new banner 
and place it in the middle of the table again, but this time with white dye coming across the bottom of the banner. Grab the new banner and place it in the middle left of the table with white dye top left corner to bottom right. Grab the new banner and place it in the middle of the table and that is actually your S by the way but once, once again we're going to be adding that there blue dye. Grab the new banner and the final banner and stick it on the end there and there you will have dominoes. You can see it really does make such a huge difference. I love how that looks. It really does kind of add an extra layer to our restaurant. And just in case you're curious about the differences in letters, if you want chunky letters without the outline lettering, look at Wendy's and then look at Domino's. You can see the difference. It really depends where you're going to be placing these letters, I feel. But there you go. It's up to you which kind you want to make. Now, these next parts are going to depend on where you are building your Domino's, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a path and a couple of driving spots and a little bit of hedge out the front of our dominoes. Depending upon where you're building your dominoes, you might not want to add this, so feel free to skip ahead if necessary. So first thing that I'm going to be using here is I'll need some smooth stone, some doors, some oak leaves, some grey concrete, and I'll even need a little bit of white concrete too. Okay. So, first of all, I am going to dig in between the entrance here, in between these two quartz blocks, and replace them with smooth stone. This will allow me to place doors on the place. I'm going to dig in front of the entrance, in between the birchwood blanks, and replace it with smooth stone. I want to extend that smooth stone two rows forwards, like this. And then I'm going to dig to the left of these two rows, and I'm going to create a pathway that is going to extend left and right of our dominoes. So this pathway is going to connect us to the street and wherever else you might be placing this wonderful build. I am going to dig a pathway leading from the left birchwood plank area to the right birchwood plank area here. This pathway is going to be a walking path that will lead you from the car park or from the street, or wherever you might be building your dominoes, this is just going to be a large path. Again, depending upon where you're building this, this really may not be necessary. But because I showed you this at the start of the video, and because it will be in the thumbnail, I feel as though that I should show you how to make all of these things. There we go. What I'm also going to do is make car parking spaces. My car park spaces are three blocks wide, and they have rows of white concrete left and right of them. Left and right of the path, I want you to place a row of white concrete. So, what you do to the left side, you're pretty much going to want to do to the right side as well. We are going to dig three rows, one, two, three, left of the white concrete area. And we want to have grey concrete on the opposite side of the white concrete rows. We will then want white concrete on the left side of the grey concrete with one, two, three more rows of grey concrete here on the opposite side of the white concrete like this. We're going to have another row of white concrete here and then I'm going to turn this row of white and I'm going to turn it into stone slab so that you can walk around like this. We want the same on the opposite side, so really it, it is just a case of like white concrete, three rows of grey. White concrete, three rows of grey. Then you'll have white concrete, and then in this occasion there's not enough room for another parking space, so we're using smooth stone slab. Is that what it's called? Smooth stone is what it's called. Typically, I use, it used to be called just stone slab, which is like this, but in slab form. However, recently we have gotten the smooth stone, which is nice because it's easier to place a solid block than it is to place a slab, so quite happy about it really. We're going to place the white concrete as well, and once you've done that, you will be left with a nice couple of car parking spaces, and you can see it really does just make the area look a little bit nicer. And if you want to make it even nicer nicer, you can place some oak leaves underneath the windows on the left and right hand side. Make sure that the oak leaves, as a matter of fact we might even like make sure they don't connect to the entrance as well. Make sure that the oak leaves 
only sit in front of like underneath the windows like left to right like that it just looks a little bit more interesting i think it defines the entrance a little bit better but that's it Ladies and gentlemen, that is the entire outside of your Domino's. That was probably a little bit harder than you might have imagined, but hey, it looks great, and I'm sure that yours does look really, really good too. I hope it looks exactly like this one. So, now that we have done that, I'm going to show you how to make the inside of your Domino's. So, to make the inside of your Domino's, I'm going to ditch these. You will need all of these materials that I'm showing you on the screen right now. Please, make sure that you have access to every single one of those. Once you have got them, we can now immediately proceed onto the next part of the video, which is the inside. I'm going to grab them myself as well. Let's do it. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, I have just finished grabbing all of those materials that I just showed you on the screen. Now, pause the video if you have to, make sure that you have absolutely got every single one of those, and once you do, we can get started. So, the first thing that we're going to do, of course, is head inside of our Domino's Pizza. We have two major things to do, first of all. So, first, we have to do the ceiling, and we also have to do the floor. We're probably going to do the ceiling first. I'm going to begin by adding an additional layer of blue concrete underneath the roof. So, the reason being is because I want to only have about three blocks high of space inside of the restaurant. And additionally, we're going to be installing some sea lanterns in the ceiling. And if we have the sea lanterns in the ceiling, and we only have one row for the ceiling, including the roof, then you're going to have like weird sea lanterns popping up on top of the roof, which is no good for us at all. So that's why we're adding an additional row as well. So once you have finished adding a row of blue concrete to the ceiling, we have to determine where we are going to be adding all of the sea lanterns. So the first thing that I'm going to do, I think I'm going to add sea lanterns in these positions. So where we have the entrance way here, I'm going to mark out the left birchwood plank block here and the right birchwood plank block. And I'm going to count in the ceiling. I'm probably going to leave like a gap of two, like one and two. And then here, right here, I'm going to destroy, place a sea lantern. And I want this to be the same on the opposite side like that. So just like this. And then on the back of the build, I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to follow the position of the sea lantern, come towards the back. I'm going to leave a gap of two, destroy, and place a sea lantern. And I want to do the same thing front and back, just like this. And then what I'm then going to do is I'm going to notice that we are able to place a sea lantern in between those two two sets of sea lanterns like this. So you can see this already provides a nice amount of light and it is quite balanced. So I think that the other place that I'm going to add light is where we have the birchwood planks here in between the front windows on the long side, the far side. I'm also going to have sea lanterns placed in the ceiling in the same pattern as the middle set. And then this should probably provide us about enough light. So, the way that I've done this, I mean, I hope that it's not been too confusing. I've kind of just found a nice pattern to add all of the sea lanterns that isn't random, that, I mean, it just, it lights the place up and they look nice. Like, when it's random, it's a little bit weird, but this way, it actually looks like it's been all planned out and it looks good. So, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to rip up the floor. I'm ripping up the floor and I'm going to replace the floor with block of iron. So, why am I using block of iron instead of, say, quartz or white concrete or something like that? I don't know. There's something about block of iron that I like. I quite like the texture of iron, rather than just, say, the smooth texture of, you know, quartz or white concrete. Not to say that I don't like any of those at all, but it just seems like in places like this, I like the idea that there's some sort of, like, hard tile down or... Like, it's got, like, a literal, like, metal floor or something. You know, something... It, it just seems right for me. And why iron? Why, why a white block? Why am I only discussing white? Well, the reason for that is because we've got blue on the ceiling. We have red accents above the windows, which are visible on the inside. We've also got the birch. We've got the terracotta, which leaves only one colour, really. And we do have a little bit of white around the entrance and stuff, but... 
I don't really want like a red floor <laughs> or a blue floor or a wooden floor so white in the form of iron seems quite good but you know feel free to chop and change I mean this really is only a suggestion for what you could do to an interior I mean if you want to add additional things if you want to make it more detailed if you want it to perhaps look a little bit more like a dominoes you might have near you I mean in, in a lot of cases dominoes aren't sit-in restaurants I have never actually seen one where you can actually sit in but I do know that they exist hence why I've decided to make this more than just like a takeaway Domino's and I've made it like a sit in building but if you wanted to you could just make this like a takeaway Domino's restaurant like maybe maybe you wouldn't even like to add any seating or anything maybe it's just kind of like a pickup point so that's what I mean kind of tailor it to what you like now that we've installed the floor we have a lot more to do if you come over to the back left corner of the build I want you to place coming across the back corner going along to the right a row of six red concrete one two three four five six leave a gap of two and then place another red concrete place six more blue one two three four five six place a red concrete leave a gap of two and then place five quartz slabs coming across the one, two, three, four, five, the terracotta. We are going to extend the red concretes forwards by four. One, two, three, four. And on the left side, one, two, three, four. I'd recommend leaving a gap in the left side or the right side somewhere to allow people to get behind the counter. We're going to use blue concrete, I think, to connect the left and right side of the counter together. Somewhere along the counter, place a quartz stairs that looks like a cash register. We are now going to add some seating areas. So, you might be wondering what this row of quartz slab is. This is where people can sit and eat. So, I'm going to place an oak fence in the middle and in front of the left sides of the quartz slab area. We are now going to add either red carpet or blue carpet on top of these and this is where people would like to drink and eat and like kind of just face the wall if they wanted to, just sitting by themselves. We are going to add a lot of booths around the dominoes. These booths are all built the same way and they are built where the windows are. They're made out of red, blue concrete or red concrete and I would alternate. And I'll show you how they're made. They're very simple. So the booths are like this, where we have the glass, place a row of three red or blue concrete, and then extend out the left or right side outwards by two. Either one, the left or right side. Do the same here. So where we have these windows, I'm alternating. We've got a red one, so a blue one. You want to, that kind of one kind of makes itself. You just place blue concrete in that position. We have another window here, so red concrete, you place a row of red, and then you would decide like either the left or right side like this. And I'm going to place quartz stairs along the insides of the, these areas like this to form seats. Simply place fence in between the seats, and then the opposite colour of carpet on top of the fence. So, something like that looks really good. You can do the exact same or opposite on this opposite side here. So like in this corner here, like what have we got over there? We've got a blue. So why don't we put a red? So like a red seat in this corner. We've got a window here. Why don't we place a blue? And we'll have it in the same position as the opposite side. We have a window here. We're going to use blue again. And we'll have it in the same position as the opposite side like that. We're going to place the stairs in the corners of all of these little seating areas. And again, feel free to spice this up any way you want. And place some fence in between with the opposite color of carpet on top of the, boop, on top of the fences, like that. So, as easy as that, ladies and gentlemen, very, very simple. Additionally, we are going to have a bit of carpet on the inside. So, the carpet's easy to do. Where we have the quartz blocks of the entrance, I'm going to place blue carpet coming out of the quartz blocks. The blue carpet wants to extend out forwards one, two, three, four, five rows, like that. I'm going to place blue carpet in front of the counter at the front of the build, or actually it's at the back of the build. And I'm just going to have the carpet like extend and wrap around the counter a little bit. 
I want to place red carpet in between the two rows of blue. This is going to come forwards and connect to the counter area. Extend the red carpet out left and right to form what looks like a T-shape, like this. Place blue carpet in front of the red carpets like this, that's perfect. And place red carpets extending outwards and around with blue carpet coming along the outside of the red carpet, if that makes sense. So this way, it kind of just shows you a little bit away around the restaurant. That's pretty much all this is, and it adds some nice colors to the restaurant as well. But now that we've done that, ladies and gentlemen, you know we've got quite a basic thing going here. We're going to add a, a few small details, and these are the sorts of things that we'll need. So I, I hope I'm not missing anything. We need brewing stands, furnaces, chests, flower pots, item frames, paintings, and torches. Okay. So, on this left side here, where we have just this random row of red, this is where people can get drinks. Place brewing stands with flower pots next to them. If you like, if you would like a different idea for a cup, what works, and I don't know where it is, because I don't use it this very often, because I like to keep things simple, you can use a pickle. I really don't know where pickles are. Hang on. Literally here, right next to the torches, the man lost his pickle. So. Why, why am I suggesting pickles? Well, pickles, when you place them down, look like cups. They really do. Weird green little cups. That's an alternate, if you like, to the flower pots. But that's up to you. That, that's kind of like a, you know, that's a personal taste. I'm also going to place chests in front of where we have these cups. So you could place some different things inside these chests, representative to whatever you've placed up here. So, coming along the back counter space, behind where you would pay and all of that fun stuff, we're going to have a double set of furnaces on the left and right side. A 2x2 two two area of furnaces on both the left and right sides of the paying area. We're going to have chests coming inwards from the furnaces. In the center, an additional place to get drinks. We're going to have item frames above the chests. We're additionally going to have additional chests below this point here, so this is where you'd keep ingredients for the pizzas. And speaking of ingredients, coming along the back wall here, I'm going to place item frames above where we have these seats. And I might even have item frames above the brewing stand and the pot that we have here too. And maybe even a little bit above here. So, why do we have all these item frames? These are where we're going to put ingredients for the pizzas, the different kinds of pizzas. But that's in a second. Around the restaurant, I would like it if there were some paintings. Probably between the seating areas. So, ideally, I would like a 2x2 two two painting. The best way to do this is to block up the right side of these windows and place a painting in this corner. Here and here. That's where I want the paintings, in between the eating areas like this. The same on the opposite side here really as well, so I would like a 2x2 two two painting in between the seating areas here, probably not these ones, because that's awful, I uh, eh, no, Th there's only so many choices when it comes to the 2x2s, two two, but that one's quite good, I guess we'll go with the skull, <laughs> it's, the, it's the best of a bad bunch really, and it just kind of brightens the place up a little bit, you could even place them over there too, or over here or anything like that. But I am going to place some torches, like, around the place as well, just to kind of, like, keep things a little bit nicer and brighter, like that. We're actually coming to the end of what we're going to be doing to the interior, because we don't want to clutter it up too much. But, we have a load of item frames. The reason that we have the item frames is so that we can kind of advertise what we put on our pizzas. So, like, you know, an obvious thing to put on pizzas is meat, you know? What do pizza places sell quite often? Garlic breads. What do they also sell? Quite often, you can get like cookies and, you know, like fun little desserts. If you want, you can even have some vegetable options as well. But I just like the idea of like having some ingredients, what you can put on your pizzas, kind of scattered about the place. And you can see, oh, just about run out. So what you can do is, where, where do we even keep the vegetables? <laughs> I don't know. Where do we keep the veg, guys? Eggs. 
People don't put eggs. You do put mushrooms on pizzas though. That'll do. But you know, feel free to like stick carrots and stuff inside of these and feel free to add more going around the area. You could even put little signs. So like, um, uh, like, where's the sign here? I like the birch signs. Kind of fades into the wall, but hey. So like above this, you could put like, I don't know, like, uh, like chicken, chicken, like pizza, and then like put a price, like uh, how much would a chicken pizza cost? Well, in our world, it costs dollars. We're going for dollars, and we're going to put four. Four dollars for a chicken pizza. That's pretty cheap, honestly, depending on the size. But you guys get the idea. Like you could really customize the uh, customize these signs and stuff. You could even do it on the outside as well. But ladies and gentlemen, we have actually completed our dominoes. Very well done. Very well done indeed. We've uh, we've actually done a great job in here. It looks really nice. We've kept it nice and brand and color appropriate. I hope that you guys have enjoyed it. Why why don't we take a look at the whole build before we go? Before we conclude this tutorial, ladies and gentlemen, I just wanted to show you the entire outside of your Domino's pizza, nice and complete. You can see that we have a very nice set of colors that we've used for the build. It's quite large. It's very appropriate for a Domino's restaurant. We've got good branding on the front of the build. It's very clear what we sell here. It's Domino's Pizza. It's got the logo. It's literally written out for us. On the inside, we have a large pizza baking area. We have a drinks area as well. Plenty of storage to keep all of our ingredients plenty of seating to keep everybody happy who's here for the pizza party and that ladies and gentlemen is that i hope that you're happy with this build thank you so much for watching i appreciate all of you very 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 much you guys have been giving so much love to these city videos it warms my very very cold heart if you have enjoyed this tutorial please do remember to hit that like button as it really helps me and the channel out very very much if you are new around here, I'd highly urge you to subscribe. Click the little bell next to the subscription button. That'll ensure that you get all my stuff sent directly to your sub box. And if you leave a suggestion down below and you subscribe, then you'll be able to see what I actually do end up building. Whether or not I fulfilled your suggestion, more than likely, I hopefully have because I take suggestions very, very seriously. And that's kind of why I've, I've built all of these due to suggestions. Speaking of, if you would like to build a city, there is a great playlist for you because you can see we've got so many different city builds behind us ranging from all sorts of different things. You'll be able to make this city, all of these city builds, you'll be able to find them in the card system and the description below. And I'll tell you what, I'll probably even leave a link at the top of the comment section as well. I'm quickly going to rattle them off. We have Subway, we have Starbucks, we have KFC, Burger King, Pizza Hut. We have a cafe, McDonald's, a music shop, Taco Bell. We have a modern butcher's, we have Wendy's, and now we're of course, we have Domino's Pizza. All of them, card system, description below, and even at the top of the description. Thank you so much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. I feel like jumping off the top of the Domino's logo. Why not? I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a great day. Happy building. Good. Bye. <laughs>